It is now my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker for today, Professor Rita Wisner. Rita is both the Deputy Director of USQ's Australian Centre for Sustainable Business and Development and a Professor of Management and Organisational Behaviour here at USQ. Rita has over 20 years experience working in small and corporate entrepreneurial firms. Today she will outline her team uh, sorry, outline how her team have played a part in improving the entrepreneurial capacity and competitiveness of women in Pakistan, Nepal and Sri Lanka. Rita will share her learnings and key strategies for women to progress their own organisational and life journey. Please join me in welcoming Professor Rita Wisner. Thank you very much. I would like to dedicate today's presentation to my dad. He passed away three weeks ago. But he's been a power in my life and he's empowered me in my journey for many, many years. Um, the other person, of course, my mum. And I had a few mentors in my life that really, really empowered me um, to where I am today. Some of them females, some of them males. But this one is my dad. I've got an idea. A very good idea. I have an idea that actually may change my life. I have an idea that actually will help me earn some money, make a really good living, help my family, and I can actually change some things in the community, but most of all, my idea is a service that can really make a difference. What do I do? Um, I think I need some money for this idea. I'm going to the bank. I'll make an appointment. I've got my appointment. I'm on my way to the bank. A lot of confidence, but my legs are a little bit shaky. As I walk through the bank, meeting the bank manager to ask for my loan. I'm sitting down, being welcomed very warmly, and I'm starting to talk about my idea. The bank manager said to me, that's actually a really, really good idea. But maybe what you should do is go and do a bit more homework. Um, go find out a little bit more about how you're going to make money with this idea, uh, how you're going to cost your various aspects of your service, uh, what's your business model going to look like. And he said, what I can do, I can give you some names that you can go and see. I'm feeling good. Okay, well, this, this is possibility. But then he said to me, once you come back with your idea, um, unfortunately, you will need the signature of either your father or your brother with another, or another male in your life before we can give you a loan. Now, this is not my story, but this is the story, this is the scenario of so many women that I've worked with in the last five years, where they really cannot go forward by themselves and just empower themselves and go forward and deploy their ideas. So when we look at this particular scenario, I want to talk a little bit about the word empowerment. Because these kind of aspects or the components of empowerment really touch, touch all of us in various aspects of our lives. If we look at this particular scenario, I felt really good when he said to me, I can show you the way, I can tell you other people who to go and talk to. And I felt quite empowered. But the moment he said to me, you can't go forward without a signature of a male, that was a bit of a problem for me. So if we look at the few components of empowerment, the first one being that feeling of self-worth, 
how I felt when he said to me, no, you can't just go forward. How I felt when I thought, I can't just make choices and go forward and determine my own choices and moving my idea forward. I don't have equal opportunities here. I don't have equal access to finance. I can't really control my own life. Yes, I can control my life within my own family, but I can't control my life in an economic sense. And I can't really make a difference at a social scale and economic scale. This is disempowerment. And I think if you think about your own situation, or in many situations, where you may have had the same feelings. And I'm sure some of the speakers today will talk about scenarios where these components come to the fore. Now, my topic today is empowering women through entrepreneurship and innovation. So, the catalyst for going down this road of entrepreneurship really started many, many years ago. I grew up in South Africa. I was born in Namibia. But um, from a very early age in South Africa, I was around about five when we moved there, um, I saw so many women, um, especially at that stage, coming from townships, coming into the cities, looking for work because they need to feed their families. And what I saw were women who actually want to earn a living. And when they do, they actually feel self-worth. They feel they can control their own lives. They feel they can actually make a difference in their own families. And what do we as women do when we earn a living? A lot of that money goes into our own families. And that's the difference that I saw at a very, very early age. And that's when I decided or I knew that I wanted choices in life. But I also knew from an early age that I wanted to make a difference and help others grow in their journeys. So graduating as the first uh, PhD female at one of the largest um, universities in South Africa in my particular discipline, uh, which is human resource management and organizational psychology, um, I felt like a little bit of a trailblazer. And I, after a few years in industry, my journey started in researching the human side of enterprise, the human side of organizations. Fascinating topic area. And then about Five years ago, after a lot of con research consulting and so many stories of women that say, I have got a great idea, but you know what? I don't know how to take my idea to the next level. How do I do it? And I saw a few um, stories um, of, and I spoke to people on campus as well from countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and the kind of stories that they tell what's happening there, but also Australian women that I came across. Great ideas, but don't know how to take it to the next level. Same issues. And I started pursuing some funding. At that stage, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, at that stage it was actually AusAid. There was some um, funding available and applied for it. And I'll talk a little bit more about our programs here at ESQ in a minute. But that's really where my journey started to kind of mesh together the human side of enterprise with entrepreneurship innovation for women. So why then is entrepreneurial behavior and innovative behavior, uh, why is it important for women? And how does that link with empowerment as well? Investing in gender equality really can have transformational impacts on the economy. 50% of our world population were women. And very interesting, the McKinsey 
Global Institute did some research and they also planned a whole range of scenarios and their full potential scenario showed that if you provide women with economic, with the same economic opportunities than your male counterparts, the economy can be, the world economy can be improved by $28 trillion and or 26% of your gross national um, product globally. Plus entrepreneurship provides choices for women. We have families and it does provide us with that flexibility as well. But mostly it provides us with various components of empowerment. So what's the problems really that we want to address? Here at USQ, in our work in entrepreneurship and empowering women through entrepreneurship, um, what are the issues? Well, as a first aspect, there's a huge underrepresentation of women in the whole area of entrepreneurship. I'll talk a little bit about the aspect of entrepreneurship in a minute. Uh, but even in Australia, in 2011, only 13% of women starting a business uh, only 13% were women and that increased to 2013 to around about 19%. So we saw way behind the eight ball. Bias against women still very, very much pervasive. Now if I say to you the word entrepreneur and I say to you the word microfinance or microbusiness, what do we think about? Very often, when we say the word entrepreneur, we think about a male. And when we talk about microfinance, microbusiness, very often it is about a female. So it is very much a mindset. So it is about taking ideas of women forward, taking that to the market, but also creating that mindset of thinking big or thinking much bigger. The ecosystem of entrepreneurship is very much male dominated. Um, as we move forward, if you ever want to move forward entrepreneurial ideas and start your own business, it could be quite confronting. Um, very often in my courses, probably once a year, I would do a case study with my students. I would give them a case study. One group, I would give the case study about a male entrepreneur. Another case study, I will give it to another group about a female entrepreneur. Exactly the same case study, except we have James and we have Joanne in the other case study. And when we get feedback on that case study, in both case studies, students would identify that the male, both male and female, are very, very, very competent, very professional, great entrepreneurs, great ideas. They, got their business models and then I ask them, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to work for? And mostly they would say about 70% would usually say I'd rather work with James because Joanne seems to be a little bit bossy. She seems to be a little bit um, pushy. So the mindset come to the fore very often when we think about the whole aspect of entrepreneurship within the context of females. Um, in terms of accessing finance, very, very difficult to access finance, um, more difficult for women to access finance, and also when we access finance, it's a lot smaller amounts. Only about 3% uh, of CEOs uh, run businesses. Um, are successful in venture capital in the States. I couldn't find the exact figures in Australia, but I would say it's probably around about the same. So that's a major uh, problem that we do experience. There's a lack of mentor, mentors, female mentors, but also a lack of access to entrepreneurial development. And that's where you skew come in as well. That's the field we play in, in terms of trying to develop and creating opportunities for female entrepreneurs. Now, in terms of empowerment, the way we 
see empowerment, um, it's not about we empowering women. I don't think you can really empower someone else. But what we can do is create the circumstances within which women can empower themselves. And that's what it's all about. So when we talk about empowerment, to us it's very much about enabling. It's very much about engaging women. It's very much about bringing them into the fall of entrepreneurial thinking, entrepreneurial behaviour, innovative behaviour, and enhancing their growth in that particular area. So our domain that we work in is very much around the creativity space. When we talk about creativity, it's really about idea production, coming up with great ideas, ideation. It's very much about innovation. Innovation meaning implementing new ideas. But it's also then, if you have a great idea and you implement that idea, you know, what's the next step? Making that a reality, potentially into a business, in a social venture. If you're an intrapreneur within an organisation, it's about taking that project forward and adding value. It's really about identifying those opportunities, exploiting those opportunities and, crea and, and creating extraordinary value. So that is our domain. We also play in the domain of entrepreneurial leadership. So we have a lot of entrepreneurial leaders, especially female leaders, feeding into our programs um, that actually has an impact on the development of other women. Just want to quickly um, tell you a little bit about our work here at USQ. Uh, these are two uh, groups of women. Uh, on the right hand side we have a um, group of Pakistan. Uh, on the left hand side we have a group of Nepal and Bangladesh. We had you last year. And next year we'll have a group of Bangladesh, Nepal as well as from um, Sri Lanka. Um, if you can maybe just uh, play that a little bit. I'm just going to play three minutes of video for two years just to give you a bit of an idea of um, In November 2015, program. In November 2015, 15 female entrepreneurial leaders and male champions of change from Bangladesh and Nepal crossed the Indian Ocean to participate in an innovative capacity building program. The three-week program aimed to enhance gender equality in a business context and empower women through entrepreneurship. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade funded project is a collaboration of three University of Southern Queensland research bodies. The Australian Centre for Sustainable Business and Development, the Institute for Resilient Regions and the International Centre for Applied Climate Sciences. Project leaders from each research bodies carefully selected project participants in consultation with partner organisations to ensure participants were well placed to apply new skills, knowledge and capacities in their home countries. This was particularly important given the many challenges people, especially women, face in progressing businesses including now rebuilding after Nepal's devastating earthquakes. The participants were from three project partners. Okay, just, uh, that just gave you a little bit of a taste. So our programs, we link up with specific organisations in, in those countries. Women organisations uh, like the Ch uh, Women Chamber of Commerce, etc., in those countries uh, who actually have an impact on women there. We actually work within the space of developing women, coming up with new business ideas, taking their business ideas further and so forth. Um, and then we have a group usually of around about 15 to 16 women that's funded by the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. They come here for about three to four weeks um, in Australia. We take them to six venues. We usually start around about in Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Melbourne, Sydney, Toowoomba, Gold Coast. And we bring in usually around about 30 some of the top women entrepreneurs in Australia to feed into that program to run workshops, to run mentoring sessions with these groups, but also we do a whole range of site visits. Um, and um, very interesting, we actually, um, just on Friday, we did received this little, um, little email. 
It's just from uh, Tanya. She's one of the ladies from Bangladesh. Um, and she just said in this email, thank you very much for everything that I have learned. It really took my business forward. She was a new entrepreneur, young entrepreneur, and she just started a new business, Tan. Um, and um, she makes um, it bags, if you scroll down there, and if you can maybe just click on that. But yes, she's very, very proud. And the other thing she mentioned in the email there as well is that she's helping a lot of other women to actually also start businesses. So what we do is we, will, we link up with women entrepreneurs in other countries, but women that actually can have an impact on other women um, so that we work out strategies, we work with them after the programs on um, employing and um, navigating those strategies in their countries as well. Within the Australian domain, thank you very much for that. So within the Australian domain, uh, we also, we not only work with internet in the international domain, uh, we currently trying very hard to obtain funding to, for the development of a program in regional Queensland uh, on development of women entrepreneurs um, uh, and that's around um, mentoring. Um, it's around um, a whole program of starting businesses for women in regional areas, remote areas, um, rural areas um, to take their businesses forward. If they have a great idea, how do they go about taking it to the next level? If you're already in a little business, how do you take that business, scale it up um, to an international scale? So um, we also work within the in, uh, national domain, especially in Queensland at the moment, for instance, with the Queensland uh, uh, Rural, um, Regional and Remote Women's Network. Uh, we're linking up with various um, partners in terms of incubators also in this particular area. I very quickly just want to talk about a few issues um, in terms of the big question is when you start a business, how the heck do I go from here to there? So we've interviewed around about 50 international women, successful women entrepreneurs, uh, over 50 some of the top women entrepreneurs in Australia. And we asked them, you know, how, tell us a little bit more about your journeys. How did you go from here to there? What were the things that actually empowered you to go forward? And these were some of the things that they said. The whole aspect, the first major theme that came through, so there was probably five themes that came through. The first major theme was the aspect of self-efficacy and self-awareness. And a lot of these women were saying when they started their journeys, they were very much relied upon external things that impact upon them, but as they progress their, uh, their, their journeys, they became very much aware of their own strengths and utilizing their strengths and focusing on their strengths and emphasizing their strengths in, in, instead of their weaknesses. Very interesting, these women were very adamant that they wanted to build themselves a really good reputation around trust and respect but also around self-knowledge and learning, constantly learning new lessons. One aspect that stood out through all these interviews was the fact that they had a mentor or mentors, male and female, that can help them get, uh, navigate their journeys. The aspect of believing in themselves were absolutely critical in moving forward. And that believing in themselves usually didn't happen in the beginning of the journey. But as they failed and they learned, and that's when the believing in themselves happened as they moved forward. And very importantly, never did they look for excuses, taking that self-responsibility. The second main theme um, that came through in all of these interviews was the importance of social networks, of building your social capital. And that's not only if you're an entrepreneur and building a business, but it's also if you're an entrepreneur within an organization, if you want to take a project forward, it's about building those social networks outside your domain, um, building those partnerships, um, 
and the, this is obviously a real problem if you're, an in, if you're an introvert. Don't like going out and talking to other people, don't like building those networks. But just remember, if you're not very good at it, you can always get somebody else, always hook somebody else in to help you to build those networks. The third theme that came through very, very strongly, the aspect of social, inc social inclusion. Uh, very interestingly, um, these women were all very much passionate about helping other women. Um, and that's not a theme that we actually expected in our research. They were very willing to mentor other women. And they were also wanted to make a difference. That making a difference was a key aspect that drove them forward. The fourth one, major theme was self-promotion and the importance of this key aspect that played a huge role in their journey. And when we think about this, if I ask you, mostly women here, um, if I ask you, think about a specific aspect or incident in your life when you were very successful. And if I ask you, why were you successful? What would you say? Think about for yourself. The answers that we usually get is, uh, I had a very good team. I had a lot of support. Whereas our male counterparts are probably a little bit different. Um, I'm competent, I can do it. So I think as women, we do tend to, we don't want to shine the light on ourselves very often. And it's about stepping forward. It's about taking that step to self-promotion and making sure that we do celebrate our successes. That issue of self-promotion, it's a mind shift. Uh, something that came through very, very clearly in all of these interviews and in this research, the aspect of branding. And, you know, if you go in, if you're an entrepreneur within an organization, you want to move forward. If, you, if you're starting a business and you want to move that forward, that's critical, that branding of yourself. Um, the only promotion I didn't get in my life, I was given the feedback, you didn't brand yourself well enough. So surely I branded myself after that. So that was a very uh, important lesson that also came through. The last one that I um, quickly want to talk about is the strategies and skills that they used. All of them, just everyone mentioned the fact that they were passionate about it. Uh, so if you do go down that track of wanting to start a business, that passion would be there because that drives you through all, those all the difficult times. In terms of the business model moving forward, two aspects I just want to highlight of these women that they did extremely well. The one aspect is, the, as, is the, um, how they define their customer base. And what they did really, really well was to identify an avatar that they wanted to target for their business or what they wanted to target for their project or their social venture. And to the extent that they know even what, you know, what that person looks like, what that person does during the day, what the, shop, what the shopping habits are, et cetera, so they can really identify who they're actually developing their service or their product for. And the other aspect that they did really, really well was the whole aspect of the value proposition. Uh, of making sure that they actually solve the real problem, of making sure that they can sell the benefits of their product or their service, and also making sure that they can show the difference between their product and service and some, their competitors' product, product and service. So these were the kind of things that came through very, very strongly, all the themes that came through in empowering these women. Um, so if you do, if you are thinking about moving your entrepreneurial journey forward, 
or if you're an entrepreneur, these are the kind of things that empowered these women to move forward on their journeys. Um, in finishing off, I just want to highlight a few little things here to some of the lessons that I've learned through all these interviews and all this research. And the first aspect is you will fail, um, but you will learn through that failure and you will self-discover through that failure. There will be trepidation, there will be apprehension, but it's about smashing through that fear and feeling the fear, but, you know, move forward through that anyway. In the business sense, or if you're an entrepreneur, it's about seizing those opportunities. If you, there's a good opportunity, go for it. And I'd wait to wait for permission from someone else. The aspect of dream big came out very clearly for some of these women that did really well. The, the ones that did really well on a large scale were the ones that really dreamed very big. The ones that were quite small in their businesses hasn't taken that, they just haven't taken that step to the big dreaming yet. And then our work obviously comes in developing those dreams to make it much bigger. I guess one particular aspect here that I just want to point out as well, and that's that one of health. Uh, the importance of taking care of yourself, making sure you eat well and sleep and get enough sleep. Um, because quite a few of those women went through very difficult uh, illnesses because they didn't look after themselves. So moving your journey forward, it's also about looking after yourself. And it's really about believing in what you're doing. The one interesting aspect I just want to quickly reflect on um, in terms of what, when I asked the women in, like for instance, in, in November last year of Bangladesh, we all did in, you know, when the interviews is, how do you see the women of Australia? And almost all of them said, you know what? Um, we're just the same. We have the same problems. And they were actually talking about successful women entrepreneurs had came and talked to them, mentored them, shared their problems, and they had the same problems. In closing then, I guess in terms of moving any entrepreneurial journey forward, it's about focus and consistency. And it's about that self-empowerment, giving yourself permission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita. And thank you for acknowledging both female and male mentors. My dad had four daughters, and I used to say to him, what have I got to do to be successful, Dad? And he'd look over his glasses at me and say, get an education. Whatever you do, get an education again. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> So thank you for uh, pursuing your enablements and uh, at the local and international level and for reminding us that the importance of literacy for women in order to access economic opportunity is to provide choice and development. It's so important for us not to forget that. Mm -hmm.